Hi, and welcome back to our video tutorials on Microsoft Word 2010. In this video, I want to start talking a little bit about the borders and shading commands. And you're going to see more about borders and shading in our videos on Word tables and Word um, drawing and clip art objects. So right now we're just going to deal with borders and shading as it relates to pieces of text that would be on your document. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this title here. And if I want to get to my borders and shading option, I'm going to come right here. Now, there are some default borders that are here, and those might be useful to you. And there are some colors here for shading. Now, let's say I want a thin border on the top of this. What I'm going to do is click that drop down, and I'm going to select top border. When I do that, you're going to see that it put a thin black border there. If I wanted to remove it, I could highlight it again and just come down here and select no border and it'll take the border off. So you've got quite a few options here for the way you work with um, text and borders. If you click on borders and shading down here at the bottom, it's actually going to bring you into a dialog box that will let you completely customize the look of your borders as well as set up any kind of shading you want. We'll come back here in a little bit. Well, let's go ahead and again come back to this drop down arrow here and I'm going to put that top border on again. And then I'm also going to change the shading that's going to be behind that character. So I'm going to click the drop down right here and I'm going to find the color that I'm looking for. Maybe um, that color right there. When I click, it's applied to that text. So now you can see that my heading sort of has a, a de more decorative look to it. Now, the border and shading went all the way across because I had actually highlighted that whole line. If I had just highlighted a piece of text and then come up here and chosen a border, it would just go around that particular piece of text. You're going to notice there that it put that border all the way around that. I'll undo that and let's watch that again. I'm going to click this drop down and I'm not going to select all borders. I'm going to say I want a top border. You're going to see that it put it all the way around. So there's some limitations there. I'll just undo that. So you always want to make sure if you want to line all the way across something that you select the entire um, line. And showing and hiding your paragraph marks might help with that. If I click that, you'll see the paragraph mark there. And that's actually what I need to make sure gets highlighted to ensure that I've got a border and some shading all the way across. And you can toggle that off and on just whenever you need it. If you like leaving it on all the time, go for it. Now, if I want to remove the shading, there is a no color option right here. And you're also going to see there's a more colors option down below that. When I click on more colors, it's actually going to bring me into this custom color model here. I've got my standard colors right here, and those are basically the same choices you have from the drop down. But with this custom option, I can select any base color I want and set the exact um, brightness and contrast level. So I'm going to come over here into the, into the purples and maybe make that a, like a light purple. Color. And then I'll click OK, and you'll see the color of my background has now changed. So borders and shading, you're going to come and use these two options right here. Now, once you've actually chosen an option from one of those buttons, that becomes the default. So the last selection becomes the default for the button. Notice that when I highlight that, you can kind of see how the button is split in half. If I click the half with the arrow on it, that's when I get that menu. But if I highlight some text, like I'm going to go ahead and highlight this paragraph, and just click the button, you're going to see that a top border was applied because that was the last item that I chose. The same thing is going to be true with the shading. If I highlight that paragraph and just click on the shading button, it will apply the last color that I chose. In this case, that uh, purple or pinkish color. 
and you can always undo any of those changes as well. So remember that you've got your borders and shading buttons up here, but also remember that they're a split button, and you can either choose the drop down to select your options, or you can click the button to choose the last color that you selected, or in this case, the last border style that you selected. Now, coming back to borders, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. And right now, I've got a black border on the top of this. Let's say I want to change the color of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to borders and shading here. And it's going to bring up that dialog box. In the sample over here, in the preview over here, you can see I've got that purplish background and that thin line up at the top. Well, I'm going to click on that thin line, and you're going to see it disappears. And I wanted it to go away because I'm going to choose a new kind of line here. It's going to be a solid line, so I'll select solid as the style. But I want the color to be maybe you know this color of purple. And I also want the width to be thicker. So I'm going to go ahead and select three points. So you can see the style of border that I've selected there. Now when I click on that top area, that's where that border is going to go. I click OK, and you'll see my new border has been applied to that particular item. Now you can also control the amount of spacing between the border and the item that it's bordering, in this case the text. Again, I highlighted that block of text, and I'm going to come up here to my borders option and go into borders and shading. And what we want to do is we want to affect the spacing. So I'm going to come into Options here. And you're going to see I've got From Text, Top, Bottom, Left, and Right. So this is the amount of space between the border and the top of the text, the bottom of the text, or between the text and the top border, bottom border, left border, and right border. So maybe I want a little bit more space in here. I can go ahead and bump this up. I'm going to make it something large, like 12 points, just so it's very visible. And I'll click OK. And you'll notice a slight change in your preview there. But when I click OK here, you'll notice how much that moved down. So you can use the Borders and Shading dialog box to customize the style, color, and width of your border. But you can also use the options right here to control the way the border is spaced from your text. So that's an introduction to borders and shading. Remember, we'll talk more about borders when we do tables and when we do images.